SVR IAS Online Academy welcomes you to the world of civil services exam preparation. Come on India.com is our website. In this environment and ecology online video lecture, you will learn about pyto remediation. Pyto remediation. The topic is important because soil is getting polluted and soil contamination occurs because of the mixing of various toxic substances in the land or soil. How to get rid of the toxic substances from the soil? One of the method is to grow the plants to grow the plants that absorbs the soil contaminant and fix it in the leaves or detoxifies it. In this mechanism, the plant absorbs the soil contaminant and it takes and gets detoxified or fixes with the leaves so that at the end we can harvest the plant and we can destroy it. So at the end of this process, soil becomes clean. By using the plants to remove the toxic substances from the soil is known as pyto remediation. Pyto means plants. Pyto means plants. So the pyto remediation is nothing but efficient use of the plants, efficient use of the plants to remove, detoxify or immobilize the environmental contaminants environmental contaminants in the matrix whether it is a soil water or sediments by using the natural bi biological physical and chemical mechanism used by the plants plants are unique organisms or simply they are factory in itself because Plants are equipped with the remarkable metabolic and absorption capabilities and it has well developed transport system so that it can take up whether nutrients or contaminants selectively from the growth matrix, soil, water. Pyto remediation can be used to clean the metals pesticide contamination, solvents, explosives, crude oil, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, etc. from the land. Pyto remediation can also be used for river basin management. For river basin management through the hydraulic control of contaminants. These are the important applications of pyto remediation. You can write one or two points in the mains examination. Pyto remediation has several mechanisms like pyto sequestration, pyto ex extraction, rhizofiltration, so on. So, we will briefly discuss all the important mechanisms. As you are aware, pyto remediation has several mechanisms. One of the mechanism is pyto stimulation. Stimulation means enhancing the growth of something. Soil contains many bacteria. Some bacteria are very helpful to degrade the contaminants. So we have to grow a plants which enhances the soil microbial activity. Soil microbial activity. These microbes are attached with the roots of these plants. So pyto stimulation is nothing but enhancing the soil microbial activity for degradation of the environmental contaminants. The next mechanism is pyto volatilization. Volatilization. It means removing the substances and convert them into gaseous form and released into the air. These plants remove the substances from the soil or water and releases them into air. This mechanism is called as pyto transformation of the substance pyto transformation so oral mechanism is called as pyto volatilization next we will discuss about rhizofiltration rhizofiltration 
if pollutants or substances mixed in the water means these plants filter the water through its mass of roots to remove the toxic substances or excessive nutrients so the absorbed pollutants will remain in the root so the pollutants are removed from the soil or water and attached to the root this kind of removal of the pollutants from the soil is called as rhizofiltration rhizo means roots filtration occurs in the roots one of the another mechanism followed in the phyto remediation is phyto extraction extraction means taking out something so plants uptake and concentrate the substances from the environment into plant biomass these are the plants which extract the pollutants and store in its plant biomass wherever is possible whether root leaves etc so that environment is free from pollutants now next mechanism is phyto stabilization phyto stabilization stabilization means stopping the movement of the pollutants from one place to another place because of the leaching pollutants are washed in the water and reaches the another place or environment where the new environment gets polluted because of the pollutants so we should stop the movement of the pollutants for that phyto stabilization mechanism is used it reduces the mobility of the substances in the environment by limiting the leaching of substances from soil these plants helps to limit the leaching of the substances or pollutants from the soil the another important mechanism in the phyto remediation is phyto sequestration phyto means plant sequestration means taking something and arresting the substance from released into the food chain for example in the root there are many cells or root vacuoles pollutants or substances are absorbed and keep arrested in the root vacuoles so the substances will will not reach the plant biomass or leaves so that the pollutants may not reach the food chain this is the another mechanism involved in the phyto remediation in this image you can understand the various methods of phyto remediation easily for example if the pollutant is absorbed and stored in various parts of the plant is called as phyto extraction if the pollutant is absorbed and released into the environment or gas means is called as phyto volatilization if the pollutant is absorbed in the plant and is degraded in the leaves means is a phyto degradation in case pollutant is not absorbed into the plant but it is stabilized and leaching will not occur means is called as phyto stabilization the phyto stimulation means the pollutant is not absorbed but it is degraded in the soil itself by stimulating the microbial activity means it is called as phyto stimulation now let's discuss the various advantages of phyto remediation the cost of the phyto remediation is cheaper compared to the traditional methods because here the cost only is growing the plants is the only cost definitely the cost of the phyto remediation is lower compared to the other methods here the plants can be easily monitored the other important advantage plant can be easily monitored another important plus point is that it is the least environmentally harmful method it means in the phyto remediation we are using the naturally occurring organisms like plants to remove the pollutant or substance from the soil so it is a more natural state phyto remediation is a alternative or a complementary technology for other mechanical conventional technologies it can be used as a alternative to the 
conventional cleanup technologies which requires high capital input labor intensive energy intensive here we are using the plants which does not require intense manpower or energy intensive intensive nor needs high capital cost so it's a environmental friendly least cost effective requires less manpower requires no energy at all to remove the pollutants from the soil now let's discuss about the various limitations of pyto remediation pyto remediation depends upon the plant's surface area and depth the root reaches for example is the soil or this is the area got polluted with a particular kind of uh, substance is the plant its root roots reaches this much area but we have to decontaminate the the entire soil so it depends upon the depth of the root and surface area of the plant generally plants grow slowly and it has low biomass so it requires a long term commitment to remove the pollutants from the soil and the another major drawback is that it's not possible to completely prevent the leaching of the contaminants into groundwater the pyto remediation does not prevent the leaching of contaminants into groundwater completely so some amount of substances reach the groundwater and pollutes the groundwater these are all the major drawbacks of pyto remediation so pyto remediation topic already asked in the ups exam in the mains examination few years back so prepare well on this topic it's useful for prelims as well as for mains examination download the pdf and revise it properly